resonance structures. In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of what a resonance structure is, how we know what kinds of molecules we can draw resonance structures for, and pick out a few examples where draw, being able to draw resonance structures is really important for under, understanding the actual structure of a molecule. So I think the simplest way to understand resonance structures is to look at an example of a molecule where we can only truly understand its structure by drawing resonance structures. So if we take something like a carboxylate group. So a carboxylate ion is just a deprotonated carboxylic acid. This R group here could be any alkyl chain, I'm not specifying, but all we really care about is this N group, this carboxylate ion. Now from this molecular structure, we might expect that if we compared the length of this carbon-oxygen bond to this carbon-oxygen bond, the double bond we'd expect to be both shorter and stronger than the single bond. And that just goes back to our understanding of how covalent bonding works. We expect a multiple bond to be stronger and shorter than a single bond. However, when we analyze this molecule using various different techniques, what we find is that actually the carbon oxygen bond at the top here is exactly the same length as the carbon oxygen bond at the bottom and they also have exactly the same strength. So there must be something going on here. This picture is obviously not sufficient in giving us all of the information about what the bonding in this molecule looks like. The reason for this is we can actually draw an alternative structure. So if we fully draw out the Lewis structure here we'd have to put two lone pairs on this oxygen and actually three lone pairs on this oxygen because it's got that negative charge. And what we find is that if one of the pairs of electrons on this oxygen moves down to create a second carbon-oxygen bonding pair of electrons, and one of these carbon-oxygen bonding pairs of electrons is able to shift over onto the oxygen at the top, we can create a new molecule which looks very similar, except our double bond and our single bond have switched position, and so is this negative charge. And these two structures here we would describe as resonance structures. When you draw resonance structures, you give this double-headed arrow to show interconversion between them. And what we're seeing here is that through sort of simple shifting of lone pairs and double bonds, we can rearrange our molecule to swap the positions of the double bond and the single bond. But that now begs the question, okay, so shouldn't the bottom carbon-oxygen double bond now be shorter than the carbon-oxygen single bond at the top? But no, we still find that if we analyze this species, we end up getting a picture where the carbon-oxygen bond lengths are both the same on both of these bonds. And the reason for that is because neither one of these resonance structures describes the structure of the molecule. It's actually both of them together that describe the molecule. So instead of having one carbon-oxygen double bond and one carbon-oxygen single bond, a more accurate picture of this molecule is that half the time, the carbon has a double bond to one of the oxygens, and half the time it has a double bond to the other oxygen. So what that means is that on average, what we see is between each carbon and oxygen, there is a bond that is stronger and shorter than a single bond, but weaker and longer than a double bond. We see the average of these two states. We see the average of the double bond and the single bond. We can draw that as something like this. And this is a more accurate depiction of what we see analytically. We see a carb two carbon-oxygen bonds that are exactly the same as one another, and they have the strength of a single bond, which is always there, shown in this solid line, and half of a double bond, which is shown by this dotted line. But both of these carbon-oxygen bonds are identical, and we still have this negative charge. However, now it's in the middle, because sort of half the time it's on this oxygen up here, half the time it's on this oxygen down here. So resonance structures are relevant when there are multiple positions in a molecule where a double bond can take that are kind of equal in energy. So just drawing out our previous example very quickly, you saw that our double bond could either be between the carbon and the oxygen at the top or the carbon and the oxygen at the bottom. These two alternative structures are our resonance structures and they describe the possible positions of the double bond. In this case, there are only two possible positions, but there's no reason there couldn't be more in another molecule. And it's only when we take all of the resonance structures together that we kind of average them out that we sort of represent the true nature of the molecule, the true nature of that bond. Neither one of these structures on their own is correct. However, the average of the two of them, where we have one and a half bonds between the carbon and each of our oxygens, that's an accurate picture of what this, what this molecule actually ends up looking like and behaving like.
So in general, we form resonance structures by the movement of double bonds. Often that also involves the movement of lone pairs of electrons, but it doesn't necessarily. One example where we only see movement of double bonds is benzene. So benzene, we normally draw the structure like so. Each of the corners here represents a carbon. We just have a six-membered carbon ring. And three of those pairs of carbons have a double bond between them. Three of those pairs have a single bond. At least that's what this molecular structure would actually look like. However, we can draw a resonance structure of this by shifting our double bonds round in a circle, just moving them one place as you rotate. And we can draw an alternative structure where the double bonds are in the three positions where previously there were single bonds. That's why when you look at a benzene molecule analytically, you see that all of these carbon-carbon bonds are the same length. There aren't three short ones and three long ones. They're all the same length, and it's a perfect hexagon. And that length is somewhere between a single and a double bond. You'll sometimes see benzene represented like this. And this is probably a more accurate picture because it shows we don't have three double bonds and three single bonds. We actually have a hexagon of carbons and then a kind of one and a half bonding structure that is equal between all of the carbons. The important thing here, the reason both of these structures are equally valid, are equally sort of likely, is because they're both the same energy. They're both just six carbons in a ring with three double bonds and three single bonds. We could push these arrows away any way we wanted, but if we made a structure that was really, really unstable, or that was much higher energy than the original structure, we wouldn't really consider that resonance structure because it's not going to contribute significantly to what the molecule looks like. It's all about rearranging your double bonds and lone pairs in a way that doesn't make your, make your molecule very unstable or high energy. Most of the time, your molecule will look exactly the same, and it will actually just be related by symmetry in some way. We can also take, for example, the carbonate ion, CO3, 2 minus. Here we have an ion where one of our oxygens is double bonded to the carbons and two of them are singly bonded and hold a negative charge. However, we can imagine a pair of electrons from one of our oxygens could shift to create a double bond. The double bond up here could break and the two electrons go onto this carbon. And we end up with a molecule that's almost identical, but has essentially just been rotated so that the, the double bond is now in the bottom right rather than at the top. We could do a similar thing again and we could put the double bond position on the bottom left hand side and here we have three resonance structures they're all as stable as one another and what this means that it, is that in this case the kind of double bond nature is split over three bonds so instead of each of these carbon oxygen bonds looking like one and a half bonds it looks more like one and a third but importantly all of these structures are equally stable that double bond spends one third of the time in all three of those positions the final resonance structure the syllabus prescribes is ozone. Ozone looks something like this. as a Lewis structure. However, we don't find that we have one short oxygen-oxygen bond length for the double bond and one long oxygen-oxygen bond length for the single bond. What we actually find is that this double bond is able to shift over. And the end result is that the double bond spends half of the time in each of these positions, and so each of these oxygen-oxygen bonds is actually has a strength and a length somewhere between a single and double bond again. And you'll find that these kind of these kind of patterns occur over and over again, where you're shifting double bonds, you're shifting lone pairs of electrons, and you will end up with multiple positions that the double bond can be in, and then your structure, your actual molecule, behaves as if it's an average of all of those resonance structures. Okay, so key points to take home from this video. Resonance structures can be drawn for molecules where double bonds can be in a number of positions. The actual structure of the molecule, however, is best described as an average of all of those stable resonance structures. And in general, we form those resonance structures by shifting double bonds, and often that also involves shifting lone pairs to form alternative stable bonding arrangements where our double bonds are in different positions now. Yeah.